Hey YouTube, I'm super excited to kind of launch this new video series where I take you from step one of having kind of an idea of a startup to actually launching it, deploying it, and getting users to log in and create accounts on your site. So stay tuned, there are some super excited things ahead. And again, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot and it's really the main motivation behind me doing this. If you are a new viewer, um, it would be awesome if you click that subscribe button. I am trying to publish these videos every other day where I will kind of walk you through literally from step one, not having any kind of code to managing your users um, in, on a Heroku terminal. So if that sounds awesome, like it can bring any kind of value to you guys i would super appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button it shows me that i'm doing something right um, but yeah um, stay tuned and I'll catch you guys in the next clip cool so here i am on the godaddy main page i'm um, kind of where my i like to buy my domain names my dns of choice i know that something like namecheap is also a viable alternative so i'll leave this up to you but basically, if you want to go down the name route, which is completely optional, you don't need a dedicated domain to kind of follow along with this process. I just personally like to have a domain set, bought out, just so like, kind of makes the entire process a bit more fun for me. So if you do decide to go down this route, I would highly recommend something like GoDaddy. Um, just make sure you type in something that cool name or whatever your name is and make sure that it is available i can't can't tell you guys the amount of times where people will come up with me um come up to me with a really cool domain name and they think it's not taken just because when they navigate to it on a browser nothing shows up so you've got to make sure that you can purchase it from like a provider and also you have to keep in mind that really good domain names or shorter ones will tend to cost more. So 500 actually isn't even that bad. I've seen some go for like thousands of bucks. So actually a depth design was 200. Um, thought it was manageable, so decided to purchase that one. So if you decide to go the name route, um, make sure you get that ready. And awesome, guys. Cool. So here we are. You'll see that a depth design is currently being parked for free, courtesy of GoDaddy. Thanks, GoDaddy. So before we actually get started with any code, it'd be, I think it'd be cool to maybe talk about the general premise of the idea so we know exactly what we're building. So a depth design was kind of a little idea I came up with. I thought it'd be cool if we had some sort of thought board or think tank where users can upload cool designs they see. And I'm talking specifically mobile and web designs. And so next time you're kind of looking for design inspiration, you can just kind of navigate to adapt that design and check out some cool designs. So that is the general idea to actually build it out. The tech stack we're actually going to be using for this series is going to be Ruby on Rails to kind of handle the data models, how we represent these different images that users upload. We'll be using Bcrypt to kind of handle our user authentication. And then we'll actually be implementing a React component to this. So I'm super excited to walk you guys through this. Um, catch you guys in the next clip. Nice. So all I have right here is a terminal up. I am currently in my desktop directory. And I'm going to be kind of walking through this with you guys. It's actually been a while since I've personally created a Ruby on Rails project from scratch. So today we're kind of going to be looking at App Academy's curriculum in which they kind of clone Airbnb. Um, not everything is going to translate, but the initial setup we can definitely use here. So to begin, you need to make sure that you have Postgres installed and also Ruby installed. You can tell if they, it's installed by kind of checking the version you have on your current platform. If you don't have these installed, pause the video right now and take a second and Google installing Ruby on your current platform, whether that be Mac or Windows, and then come back to this. So make sure you have Ruby installed and also Postgres. And I think Postgres, you want to take a look, is dash dash version. Cool. 
So take a sec, make sure you have all of that set up. And once you do, we can kind of just go line by line in this setup checklist. So the very first thing we're going to do is create a new Rails project. And we can use that with the Rails command. Um, but we want to make sure we specify the database and also skip turbolinks. Um, the data database here is kind of self-explanatory. We're just telling Ruby that, sorry, telling Rails that we're using Postgres for our DB. Sorry, I'm not really sure what skip turbo links is, but I'm sure you can look that up. But let's just go back in here. Um, we're going to say Rails, new. And then here's where we're going to kind of specify a name for our project. So whatever you guys decide to call your project, I'm calling it adept.design. Cool. And this is where we're going to add the extra options. So we're going to say Postgres. Cool. And then make sure we skip. Well, we're going to let that do its thing for a little bit. Awesome. Once that's all done, um, Rails has actually created a bunch of new files for us. We can check it out by actually CDing into adept.design. Cool. If we take a look right here, these are all kind of just self automatically generated by Rails. So thanks, Rails. So from here, we can actually, what's cool, is start a new server. We can do Rails S for short. And you can see right here, Puma, which is the default server used by Rails, is setting up a new server. And it's now currently listening on local port 3000, or local host 3000, sorry. If we go here and actually navigate to localhost 3000, you'll see, yay, you're in Rails. So if you got to this step, Awesome, that's a great first step or in the direction of creating this new startup. Um, if you haven't gone to this step, feel free to pause, go through the steps. If you come across a bug or error, make, um, post in the comment section below and we'll see if we can help you out. But awesome, the very last thing I want to do in this episode is actually get this up to GitHub so we have a place to store our code. It, it's also going to be easier to link to it if a problem does arise. So stay tuned for that. Um, we'll be back in a second. Cool, guys. Last thing I want to cover is actually how we can upload our code to GitHub. This will allow us to access our code from anywhere. Plus, it makes it easier for recruiters to kind of check out what kind of code you're working on. So here I am on the GitHub new repo page. If you don't have a GitHub account, um, feel free to pause the video and go through that quick process. It's free. It shouldn't take more than 30 seconds. But you're going to create a new repo once you're in the main dashboard. Uh, I can actually show you that in a sec. And then feel free to name your repo, whatever you named the folder. I like to make it consistent. So I just called mine adept underscore design. And awesome guys, from there we can just kind of follow the steps right here. This is actually just creating a readme file which we don't need because Rails has already created one for us. So what we do need to do is run git init on our folder. So let me navigate real quick back to a depth to the side and run git init. You should see like initialize or reinitialize re existing git repo. Cool. Once we have that, we're going to just say git add all. Um, that's what the kind of dot stands for. So, so git add all. And I'm going to sorry guys, I'm gonna make this a bit bigger. Cool. From there, we're going to create our first commit. And we can call it literally first commit. There's actually a kind of language in which you want to make your commit messages, um, but we will go through that probably in a later episode. But for that, make sure, first off, make sure the first letter is always capital. That just, this is how it goes. Didn't make the rules. So from there, we can actually just create a remote origin. So from, I'm just gonna copy that for there. Cool. And it probably says exist already because I already ran the command, but for you guys, it should be like, oh, awesome. We just create a new remote. And then from there, guys, we can just push up everything we have with that git push command. You see, it's GitHub's kind of doing its thing. Cool. 
And remember, GitHub is just a kind of version control software. There's a lot of different ways to do this or kind of version control. Um, GitLab is also a pretty viable alternative, but Git GitHub is pretty is gets used pretty often in the industry, so it's something I'm just kind of very comfortable using myself. The green boxes, which I want to show you guys real quick before we end this, is in your profile. So you can actually see how often you code and recruiters. I've actually been recruiters actually come up to me and be uh, and and said that this is actually a variable that goes into who they decide to hire or at least call on into the first text screen. So you can see kind of went a little break right there, but it's all right. I'm slowly back getting back into it. So awesome, guys. That should conclude the first episode of this series. Hopefully, you guys like it so far. Feel free to comment on what I can do better. Um, this is a learning process for both of us. What I can so let me know um, if you are new to the channel. It would be awesome if you subscribe. I'm just trying my best to publish maybe an episode every other day. I'm going to try to stick to that. So awesome, guys. I will catch you in the next clip, and happy coding.